It just makes me question how prepared they are for anything. All new at 10 o'clock tonight, a consumer justice back to school investigation finds some North Texas school districts are not doing enough to prepare for emergencies. And the proof is in the thousands of pages of documents that we have obtained from school districts all across North Texas. Consumer justice investigator Kristen Severance went through those records and found some disturbing facts, specifically about fire drills. Kristen? Yeah, so we requested these fire drill reports from 68 school districts. That's more than 1,500 schools. Some districts didn't even know they were required to do these drills until we told them. We met eight year old Nicholas Bird soaking up the last seconds of summer. <laughs> Mom Audra is focused on the normal back to school stuff new class, new teacher, not if Nicholas's school is doing enough fire drills. I took it for granted that they did. National standards and municipal fire code require school districts to complete one fire drill a month. Deputy Fire Marshal for Tarrant County, Keith Ebel, says the drills are especially important for elementary schools. Well, you have to know if the kids are going to be able to get out of the school in a timely fashion. Robert Solomon of the National Fire Protection Association says this standard is there for a reason. Practice, practice, practice is what the NFPA code is looking for. Consumer Justice requested fire drill reports for 68 school districts in North Texas. More than 50% of the districts were out of compliance by missing at least one drill. At the bottom of the list, three school districts did less than half the required amount of drills. Grandview Independent School District, where Nicholas goes to elementary school, completed just 33% of the drills. And Nicholas couldn't tell us what he would do if a fire broke out. And when the bell rings, what are you supposed to do? What did you do in class? You don't remember? Grandview Superintendent Joe Perrin agreed to a sit down interview. Out of the 68 districts, Grandview did the fewest amount of fire drills. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? Uh, we weren't aware that you needed to do the fire drill once a month. We did monthly safety drills. Safety is uh, very important to us. Perrin said they didn't purposely skip the drills. I knew that we needed to do them, and we have always done okay. fire drills. I just right. didn't realize that you, that you needed to do it once a month. Isn't it your job to know? Yes, it is my job to know, and ultimately, responsibly um, comes back to me. He says Grandview has already made changes to make sure they'll be in compliance this school year. We met with the administration um, yesterday and um, put some procedures in place. The principals are going to pick the day each month that they're going to have the fire drill. Paradise Independent School District completed just 36% of the required drills. The intermediate and junior high did just one fire drill each all year. If you were a parent of a child that went to that school, what would you be thinking? That's not acceptable by any means. Did I not take my child's safety into consideration? I think it's important. Paradise Interim Superintendent Robert Criswell wouldn't sit down for an interview, telling me over the phone to take his word for it when I asked if they'll be in compliance this school year. We really want to talk to you about these fire drill reports. So we caught up with him outside of the Paradise Administration building. You did 36% of terrible, the required that, drills. Yeah, terrible. So, so what plans do you have to make sure that your district We've is in compliance? We've already got plans submitted from every campus, every principal to and the records for the Godly Independent School District show they did 50% of the required drills. Assistant Superintendent Jeannie Cobb says they actually did more. Well, we were, but we weren't recording all of them on that form. How do you know? Well, we have better procedures in place. And a lot of it comes with some leadership moves and things like that. Cobb says they had a real life example proving their students were prepared for a fire. When we had a real grass fire behind our elementary school, and we evacuated over 600 students in three minutes. And while the districts at the bottom of our list all made changes, ensuring a safer school year, who would have checked if consumer justice didn't? It just makes me question how prepared they are for anything. Now, we went to the state to ask who is checking to make sure these fire drills are getting done. It's a question that had nearly every agency we contacted passing the buck. So we went after the answers. We'll have that part of the story tomorrow on CBS 11 News at 10 o'clock. It's, it's a fascinating 
look inside something you would never even give a second thought as a parent. My first question, maybe you guys out there watching too, is is my kid's school somewhere in the stack? And have you done anything to where anybody out there can maybe go check on their kid's school and see if they right. did what they're supposed to? Yes, you do not have to go through all these documents. <laughs> you yes. did that for yes. us. Yes, Thank did you. it for you. You can go to cbsdfw.com right now, go to the iTeam section, just click on the button, and you'll find a database of more than 1,500 schools, and you just click right on there, and you'll see how many drills each school did. You just go to the you know fire drill story and scroll to the bottom of the story. The database is right there. Thanks for doing the work for us. You bet. Very helpful. We'll be back look tomorrow. Forward to part two tomorrow yes. night. Look forward to it. Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. And if you need consumer justice, it's very easy to reach Kristen by phone or email. You can leave her a voicemail at 817-586-7211 or email her at consumerjustice at ktvt.com.